Hi there, Matt Barker here, and this is my sixth video in the Katana series. Today we're going to look at Collection Expression Language, or CEL, C -E -L, in Katana. We're going to use CEL to help assign materials for our scene. But CEL is a way, uh, a technique in Katana we use a lot. It's a way to specify rules as to which actions apply to which meshes. Similar to how a selection might apply uh, in other programs where we make a shift selection, uh, but it's more procedural in nature. We can specify rules as to which actions apply to which meshes, uh, isolate objects based off naming, we can set attributes uh, very in a very specific way. But whatever it is we're doing, uh, the idea is, is that we set up this CEL language and if the rule matches, the action happens. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to actually do one. So we've got the single material in the scene. If I view the material assign here, you'll see I've got my grub shape character and I've got my grub network material. So over here in CEL, I can drag, or in material assign slot rather, we can middle mouse grub underscore nm over onto here. So the material assign node just has two questions to answer, which object and which material. So I've got the material there. The next step is to pop on the object. So if I come up to grub shape, I can middle mouse drag that onto statements and that will work out what this what I just dropped on is if uh, and set it up. There's three different ways to do a CEL statement, a path, which is what this is. We have a collection, uh, which we'll get to that in a bit, uh, and custom. So custom and uh, paths I use the most. And as you see here, you can have multiple at the same time. So what the hell are these? Path is the easiest one, where it's you middle mouse drag in the path, and this object and its children will get this material applied. So if we, if we, uh, if I was just to dump characters in there and delete, highlight that one and delete, just all the characters will get uh, the, the grub network material on it. So there's quite specific things you can do though with some of the other options. So this one's easy, but if we, if we drag in the grub shape like we had, and then on this node here, I'm going to shift drag over this here just to show you can do that. Um, but let's just imagine that the character artist updates the animation on this and in turn might change the name. When we refresh assets, which is this button by the way, flush caches, everything will reload, um, this would break. So this, although it's the first way I showed, it's no, by far the, the best way to do it. So we can do it in a few different ways or better ways. So if we go uh, add statements, I'll just get rid of this Alembic, we don't need that. Come back to our material assign, double click. Okay, I'm going to add a custom this time. So with this one, we can still middle mouse drag in, but it's quite different. I'm going to drag in the character folder. So this time we've just dragged in the, the text. We've just copy pasted the text over basically, and you could just write this as well. So if I type slash, I'll zoom in here a bit for you. If I type slash slash wildcard and leave that as my statement, that will get every single node under characters and individually apply the grub network material to it. So that's the first technique. The double slash with the asterisk there will do that. If I was to go, another technique we can do with cell is we can do slash slash um, grub asterisk. What this will do is only apply the given thing to things that start with the word grub, and this is case sensitive. We could do asterisk here as well. So this one will apply to any object with grub in the name at all, anywhere in the name. And as you probably guessed, we can do it this way around as well, which will uh, give us objects only ending in grub. So I could do that. I could just go, any of those would actually work because this is a very basic scene. 
but never assume that your scene is going to stay basic. Like always assume it's going to scale up. Uh, so um, I can just go in the grub folder, anything that has shape in it. And if we make other grubs, we put them in another folder. You just have, you have to have a rule or something like that. So let's imagine um, we've got some, some other stuff. I might just pop over to a text editor quickly. One sec. Okay, just this works a little better if we've got a bit of, of length in the actual uh, what we're doing. So um, if I was to, let's say I had a folder with um, a whole bunch of mushrooms in it and they all had a particular shader on them or material on them and we want to put that on. So let's say this statement applies a, a um, overall mushroom normal um, network material. But then the art director or someone um, adds in a bunch of new mushrooms, some, some glowing blue ones, let's say, and they're using a, a completely different material, but they're going in the same folder. So what we can do is we can say, we can have a, we can have another entry, like another material assign, copy paste, and then we can say, okay, all the, all the mushrooms are being selected. Anything with mush in the name, like this, gets the entry. But then you can do space minus, and you can actually do exclusions. So you can say all of these things, but not the blue ones. So this line here, although it gets quite long, but we're, we're going to apply that material to anything that's a mushroom, but not the blue ones. And then later on we could we could do another material assign just to set up the blue ones. So there's, that's a way to do a, like a subtraction or, or an exclusion from CEL. So the standard um, path statement and the custom statement and just those few tricks I just showed um, are pretty much are enough to get you by as a standard lighter look dev person maybe. Um, but there is uh, a few other ways as well. Um, some studios I work with uh, use collections quite heavily as well. So what collections are is we can make a collection at any point. So they're good for grouping assets together without having to go back to your 3D application to make a group and give it a name. So if I was to come in and say uh, the tree and the um, log uh, need to be selected together, we can create a collection create node. Place that in. Collection create, we need to uh, give it a name. I'm going to call that log and tree underscore col. Uh, and then you've got a, a CEL statement again. So we need, we need as you see, we, we, we use cell everywhere in Katana. So I'm going to grab uh, just these two locations and drop those on. And I could also use a custom that says look for anything called tree oak and anything called log. Um, but that's, that's up to you. And now you'll see here we have root collections. And that's grayed out. But that's just to show that we have a collection in the scene. And we can now use this as a reference in our CEL. So back in our material assigned, for example, I can change this to collections. Oh, it already is. And I can uh, middle mouse drag in the collection. And now my grub network material will be assigned to anything that's inside of the collection called log and tree underscore col. So that's another way. It's good if you've got a random selection of objects you need a reference or um, I had it recently in the render man competition um, I'm, I'm working on now where there was a lot of objects on the ground but they're all different types of things like we had some cereal a box but then we had some it's the kitchen challenge thing and I needed to group all of those just to show it to, to uh, reference them slightly different I was able to make a collection called floor bits and then I was able to say okay anything that's on the floor do this anything that isn't do that uh, so it's, it's a great way of, um, there's lots of great ways of thinking about how to categorize things and specify what objects are getting affected by the, the given operation that you're doing.
Ok. So that's assigning materials. Uh, the, the, the one thing with some of you may be thinking is, uh, hang on, in a, in a big scene where I've got like 50 odd materials, does that mean I end up having uh, hundreds and hundreds of material assigned nodes? Um, the answer is yes, it does. Um, and yes, that does get messy. Uh, but there's a, a fix in Katana to um, clean that up or, or a best practice sort of thing. So I've just copy pasted that just for example's sake. Um, if I create what's called a group stack node, we should talk about them now too. So a group stack is a special type of node that holds other nodes. And with the group stack, we can edit it, E. And then uh, it says here, no type is set for this stack. Drag a node in to set the type. So you can stack all sorts of different nodes up inside a group stack node. But the first one you drag in, that shift and middle mouse and drag, and then let go. The first one you drag in designates what type of group stack node it is. So this is now a material assigned group stack that will only accept groups, uh, material assigned nodes. I hope that made sense. Uh, so I can just sh uh, shift, middle mouse, drag as many of these as we want in. And they're now in here. It's all red because it just doesn't have a connection, that's all. So there's a few GUI things in uh, Katana that will pop up that are fairly obvious when you're breaking things. Okay, so now we have a group stack node, but I rarely ever call it that. I'll uh, call that forest MA. Um, it's one because I've got it over here. I can show one I prepared earlier. So the forest material assigns here. I've got all the objects for the, the forest and the sea or paths and things there. Um, cool. So that's all working. I need to make a group stack for my fog materials here um, as well. But anyway, so that uh, may seem simple, but that, that, that's it. That, that's assigning materials in Katana is really simple. And I'd just like to finish on just comparing it when, when working on large detailed environments um, in other applications in the past, working with references and bringing in stuff, the amount of time that you would spend reapplying materials if shaders get detached or if an edit happens in another scene and it doesn't carry through. Um, Katana's just a breeze with that stuff because it just simply doesn't happen. Like, every now and then you'll have a naming or a position change when you're editing the location of your alembic and stuff if you overuse path um, statements which I generally have a little bit in this scene but um, so every now and then things would attach but it's as simple as just repairing the CEO we don't have to go back through original source files or exit the application we just correct our paths here and work it out there's some great monitor features as well to work out what's um, where things are and what materials they have applied as well, which we'll have a, a video coming up where we go into the monitor. But um, if you haven't used RenderMan or Katana before, you may not be used to um, being able to pick a pixel, which takes you to the object. So that's a, a really cool feature of, um, of that. But anyway, uh, that's material signs, CEO, group stacks, and a few random other things. Uh, so thanks for joining me. The next video uh, is on placing lights and how lighting, how lighting in general works in Katana. So I'll see you there.